Hello, Shangling. I did not expect that. Master, how are you keeping these days? Are you well? Oh, very well, thank you. What a surprise it is that you all had the time to come and visit me today. Hello. Master, we came here because we have a question for you. Do you know about the stove god? Of course I know the stove god. Does this mean you know them personally? Ah, I see. It's the Moon Chase Festival, isn't it? How interesting. <laughs> so you came to hear some stories about the Stove God. That's right. We're investigating something that happened recently. I see. The Great Stone Surfaces. <laughs> and so you open an investigation. <laughs> I must commend your guesswork this far. I did indeed know the stove god of whom you speak, but it was a great many years ago. <laughs> Moonchase was originally a rite observed by the Adepti, not something in which the ordinary people of Liyue would ever partake. But over the years, they have sought to emulate it for themselves many times giving rise to various festivals bearing the Moon Chase name. On nights when the moon shone bright, everybody would get together for joyful reunions. There would be fine food, fine wines, and choice teas. Later, Rex Lapis unified all of these various festivals under the Moon Chase name to honor an old friend of his. In short, the heavens were our witness as we vowed to the moon to come together in joyful solidarity, to remember the past and reflect upon the present. That is the meaning of the Moon Chase Festival. Rex Lapis. <laughs> <laughs> that friend made many contributions to Liyue, and Rex Lapis would not have them go unrecognized. Turning this season into a commemoration of his old friend was also a way to honor that friendship. I can only presume that the Stove God Festival was one of the many subsumed into the Moon Chase Festival. In the hands of Rux Lapis, our nation's traditions were faithfully upheld. It is to their detriment that we must now be the ones to inherit this duty. Ah, oh, Kuching, I simply won't allow you to be so down on yourself. Nothing would delight Rex Lapis more than to know that those who follow in his footsteps continue to value these traditions and are working tirelessly to do them justice. Thank you. Lady Kuching! Huh? Lady Kuching, Lady Ningguang wishes to speak with you. Ningguang's looking for me? Must be important. Please excuse me, everyone. If I'm not back soon, you'll find me at Ningguang's office. There she goes. Hmm. Kaching's a lot more serious when she's got her work face on. Do you want to know who Rex Lapis's friend was? Oh, oh, hi, my guys. Yes, precisely. There are few genuine coincidences in the world. The story of the Lost Festival and the Old Friend are indeed one and the same. The Stove God was a good friend of mine, too. <sighs> what a pity it is that the God is now gone both from the world and from people's memories. How could that happen? It is to everyone's regret that the Stove God passed. But God's cannot be fully destroyed, and we made a pact to wait until the land became fruitful once more. For perhaps the Stove God would then return, albeit in a new form. Really? Master, you must miss the Stove God a lot, right? From the way you talk about it all, it sounds like you were the best of friends. Yes. Thinking back on it all... There are many fond memories. I'm pleasantly surprised to find that Kuching is investigating this. 
She is a tenacious child, and anything she sets her mind to, she will diligently pursue. It warms my heart and makes me want to give her a helping hand. Unfortunately, however, I cannot simply give her the answer, for the process is of great importance to her. Kuching's grandfather once researched the stove god, and now she follows in his footsteps. Since Kuching has inherited this conundrum, so too she must inherit the journey to its resolution. You knew Kuching's grandpa? Of course. I count all the people of Liyue among my good friends. I remember when he was the same age as Kuching is now. <laughs> ah, so young. Grandparent and grandchild are definitely made from the same mold. Both diligent enough to take on anything and bold enough to see it through to the end. I like to think of Lear as my own little potted plant. I watched it grow and blossom, and it grows more beautiful all the time. In the blink of an eye, the buds of yesterday are in full bloom today. <laughs> it's wonderful to see. For new blossoms must bloom on the branches if the tree is to remain evergreen and ever young. My dears, you are absolutely right to focus your investigation on the stone. It is, as you suppose, the lost statue of the stove god. And within it lie all the answers that you seek. I should like to see the stone for myself if you would lead me to it. Perhaps the truth will emerge even as we watch on.